One of the aspects of big meetings like this that I always enjoy is finding out some of the new agents that are under investigation. And so this time we're talking with Dr. Mark Levis, who is an MD, PhD at Sydney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center at Johns Hopkins, and he's also the director of the leukemia program there. We're talking about ASP 2215, which is for relapsed refractory AML. What's ASP 2215? So ASP 2215 is the latest, greatest FLT3 inhibitor. Uh, FLT3 is a tyrosine kinase that we've been trying to inhibit for some years in AML as patients that have a mutation in this kinase have a rather poor prognosis, very aggressive disease. And we've pretty well shown that if you can successfully inhibit it in a sustained fashion, you can get a clinical benefit in the patient. The problem with these drugs that we've tried previously is either they haven't been potent enough to really inhibit the target in vivo, or when we do inhibit it and we get a response, the responses don't have a long duration because the leukemia turns around and develops a resistance mutation in FLT3. This drug was designed to hit those resistance mutations as well as to be potent and selective. Uh, and in fact, I think the results of our trial show that we've uh, achieved our goal with this agent. So tell me about the patients that you enrolled and what you found. This is phase one, phase so two. So this is phase one, but this is actually a kind of a unique clinical design. All comers are enrolled, but really, uh, if you're a leukemia doctor, you're going to put a FLT3 mutant patient on the study, if at all possible. And so the majority of these patients did have FLT3 mutations. The key point of this study was not just to find a maximum tolerated dose. In fact, that wasn't the primary goal. The primary goal was to find a dose that inhibited FLT3 in sustained fashion in virtually any patient taking that dose. And then which dose, which of those choices of dose levels was safe and tolerable. So we found multiple dose levels that inhibited the target. They were well below the maximum tolerated dose. So we didn't, nice. so we're not using the maximum dose you can. We're using the, the most efficient dose that safely, tolerably inhibits the target. And we hypothesize that that dose would be associated with the best clinical response. And in fact, that's what we showed. We got as good a clinical response rate as any FLT3 inhibitor. And getting back to the fact that this drug hits the resistance mutations, we saw a much longer duration of response. These patients were responding for four plus months. Wow, so what's next? Now, we've, since this was a phase one, two, where we expanded, uh, so we actually treated nearly 200 patients with this, we don't need to go to phase two. We're ready to go to phase three. So we're immediately moving to several different pivotal studies uh, in the phase three setting, both combination with chemotherapy, maintenance therapy after transplant, combining it with targeted agents, et cetera. So what kind of uh, response did you get from patients in terms of side effects? So this is the easiest tyrosine kinase inhibitor I've ever given. The patients, you, you question them, did you have anything? Come on, give me something. One guy said, my scalp itches a little bit. Okay, write that down. We have a gray something scalp itchiness. You know, well, it doesn't happen very often. You know, that was the best I could do. Uh, it's very well tolerated. Um, and so it's a fun drug to give. These are patients that are very sick typically. Some of them kind of show up trying to die on your doorstep. And just with a pill, you know, a pill a day, you can casually put them into some form of remission. And so some of them just kind of can't believe this. So they feel much better. Yes, dramatically so. You can, you know, once you get them after a couple of weeks on this drug and clear out their leukemia, all of a sudden they're happy as a clam. It's a lot easier than their prior therapy, which would have been some cytotoxic chemotherapy. Their hair is falling out, they're puking, et cetera. None of that's going on. In terms of what you're looking for, you've done a pretty good population so far. What are you looking for for phase three in terms of the numbers? Well, you've of got patients? to show an overall survival benefit. Right. And so you move this drug into the setting where you have an advantage. These patients in this trial are at their last rung of the ladder here, or, or the la you know clinging to the rope. Now move it in where you've already got the patient in remission, or you've done a stem cell transplant, and you want to prevent a relapse. And so when we have the advantage, now we're going to move in this agent that's safe, tolerable, and hits the target. 
So the pivotal trials are going to be placebo controlled uh, with you know folding this into conventional therapy, and overall survival has got to be the uh, you know is is the likely expected endpoint. We'll look at event-free survival also, of course. So hopefully we'll see you at either an ASH or an ASCO meeting one of these Indeed. days soon. Indeed. For uh, ASH Clinical News, we have all kinds of reporting coming out of Chicago, where I'm Rick McGuire.